what's good with the YouTube with Convex Perspective. Your boy Flacco coming live and direct, smashing, dashing like always with my co-host, Big Senor Rojo. Coming through with a whole lot of energy, man. What's cracking, YouTube? <laughs> so we're going to get straight to it, man. We're going to discuss uh, a recent riot that happened in Pelican Bay in 2017 where the prosecution a- ended up uh, filing charges of mayhem against, I believe it was five Mexican mafia associates. So without further ado, Rojo's going to get to a very interesting article, and then we're going to break this down, as always, with a convict's perspective. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. This this article is out of the, the Mercury News, and it is titled, The California Supreme Court Allows Mayhem Prosecution to Proceed Against Mexican Mafia Associates in the Pelican Bay Prison Riot. This article is by Nate Gartrell of the Bay Area News Group. Crescent City, the California Supreme Court declined a petition to examine and possibly throw out an appeals court decision to allow mayhem and assault charges against inmates in connection with a 2017 riot at the state's most secure prison. The Supreme Court's decision last March, no, excuse me, the Supreme Court's decision last week essentially upholds a March ruling by the First District Appellate Court, which found that mere participation in the May 2017 riot, not necessarily evidence of attacking and injuring guards, was enough to charge defendants with mayhem and assault on the corrections officers. The court found that given the scope and violent nature of the riot, a person of ordinary prudence could have entertained a reasonable suspicion that mayhem, battery, and and assault were reasonably foreseeable circumstances. I'm gonna pause this real quick, man, because this this falls a lot in the line of, um, what do they call it? Guilty by association and and, and conspiracy almost. You know what I mean? They're they're telling you that you know what possibly could have happened, this and that, and, and if you didn't necessarily injure a guard on purpose, while you were fighting, maybe a guard was struck on your pullback, anything. You could have hit a guard because you're pepper sprayed and thought it was an enemy. These kind of things can happen, and you can end up on some federal damn charges. Keep that in mind. Roll, uh, roll, real quick question. Does this mean, like, you don't have to be involved in the incident? You could be 50 feet away, but because you engaged and were part of the riot, you could still be charged if a, if a guard was hurt somewhere else? I'm pretty sure that's what this is going to be getting at. I haven't absorbed that part of it yet, but I think so, man. I think so, man. I'm going to read on and maybe we'll find the answer. Prosecutors in Del Norte County charged four men, all validated Mexican mafia associates, with felony mayhem, battery, assault, torture, torture, and misdemeanor charges of delaying or resisting a peace officer. A a magistrate judge threw out the case at the preliminary hearing, then rejected prosecutors' attempts to refile all but the torture counts, court records show. But the appellate court decision reverses the magistrate's ruling, clearing the way for prosecution to proceed. The May of 2017 riot involved dozens of inmates at yard three of Pelican Bay State Prison, known as the state's most secure corrections facility that used to be home to the segregated housing unit, or SHU, that incarcerated all the suspected prison gang leaders across California. That changed after a federal lawsuit and corresponding hunger strike ended the practice in 2015. During the May 2017 riot, five inmates were shot by corrections officers in a tower, and eight guards were injured. The officers fired a total of 20 rounds, but testified that all but five were warning shots, court records show. Three corrections officers suffered permanent injuries, including one with a torn tendon and another who we cry- <laughs> who required metal plates in his skull to mend broken facial bones. Two officers testified that they believed they would be killed, and one was dragged out of the fracas by a colleague in a semi-conscious state, according to the appellate court decision. At least two others said they believed they were going to die during the melee. Hmm. 
very interesting. How much of that story do you feel is embellished? Um, I think some of the, the actual date facts are wrong. I think um, as far as the guards and what they say, they may be putting a little bit on it. I mean, I can't deny if some dude got a broken face. You know, I can't deny that. Feeling like they're going to die, this and that. Hey, they may have felt that, man. But that is part of your job as a corrections officer to do these type of things. Um, I don't I don't know, Fox. I mean, that, that's a hard one to call, bro. I think I think they're putting a lot on it to try to maximize the punishment that these individuals receive. But I mean, when you when you hire Ron as a CEO, there's especially you know when you sign up at Pelican Bay, unless you get signed to the, the farm or something like that, there's gonna be times where there's gonna be violence. The majority of those inmates are lifers. They're all obviously level fours. They don't have a lot to lose. You know, so going into work every day, you should know in your mind and be prepared for the fact that you could be involved in some life or death combat at the most, worst case scenario, or that you could actually just have to break up some fights. There's going to be pepper spray. There's going to be Big Bertha, the, the projectile gun, and there's going to be live rounds coming. You shouldn't. It, there shouldn't be anything more than assault on a correctional officer, really. I mean, in my opinion, you know, that carries enough time. Stack piling all these charges on doesn't really make a lot of sense because most of these dudes probably have an extreme amount of time to do anyway. And that's going to that's gonna further make guards kind of like almost... I don't know. I don't know, bro. I, I would think that might make them, oh, okay, you guys want to do this? Well, we're going to do this now. And That's it might what I'm make thinking it more too. hostile. You know, I, I think that may be, be part of it, man, because even, you know, in prison, man, when you have these riots, man, they, they, they try to lay on different enhancements. They try to charge you for rounds. They try to build up all kinds of different charges. That's why you're like, nowadays you're having more cases of people getting whacked in their cells. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to riots and stuff like that. You have a lot less conflict and issues like that. So I'm kind of curious as far as who was involved in this riot, man. This is post into all hostilities. You know what I'm saying? So this, these were alleged Mexican mafia associates. So were they removing their own kind? Were they getting into with the Africanos? Were they getting into with the whites? I mean, I haven't heard of any conflict between any North Daniels and Sureños. I think maybe there was some conflict that happened in New Folsom. But other than that, I haven't heard any type of issues north or south anywhere. And so that just that just right there kind of raises the question to me. Like, I thought the, the whole end to all hostilities was to eliminate, you know, uh, what, we, what we used to call group factions getting into it. So they could be out there in these main lines. So I'm kind of curious about that. Was this just a reprisal attack against the Mexican mafia and its associates? Were they pissed off? Did they add all these other charges? I mean, when you... When stuff happens, anything can happen at, at any time. I got into a, to a, uh, my first melee, right, in, in San Quentin. We got off with the others over there, the, the, the natives. And in the process, man, um, everybody got down. I kept on fighting. I kept on stopping this dude out. And um, the, based on the fact that I wouldn't stop, they start. They shot the projectiles. They missed me, and they hit an MTA. <laughs> Believe it or not, yeah. <laughs> Swear to God. Did they so try to the charge point. you with assault on the MTA? No, nah, this was back then, man. They, they ended up uh, uh, Sergeant Barker. He wasn't a sergeant yet, but anybody knows Sergeant Barker from San Quentin? He was a correction officer at that time. He clocked me. He clocked me with a with a, a baton and tackled me to the ground. And in, in the process of all this happened, they must have shot off like three different times because, you know, I'm a first termer at the time, man. And, and you know, I hear all the stories. And the one thing that they didn't give me the schooling was is to get down when they start shooting the gun. And I black out when I get into that focus focal point of, of fighting. I don't hear nothing. I don't see nothing. I see everything around me. I just don't hear nothing. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm just thinking, I'm thinking now this case right here could be used to set precedent with future cases in the future now. That's all they're trying to do. So if an issue happens at High Desert, if the issue happens at Calipatria, wherever, the, wherever a riot may happen in the future, 
now they have a case that they can backlog on and use it for further prosecution. Hey, I got another little part of an article from Fox News about this as well. And it says, uh, the, 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 this, I, I'm going to skip through it. This is from Fox News. Officials said the melee began when two inmates refused to break up a fistfight at the high security prison around 1025 a.m. in a maximum security general population yard. Large group of large groups of prisoners then ran toward the fight and attacked the guards. Responding staff used chemical agents and batons to subdue the inmates, but they refused to stop fighting. Prison officials said two inmate made weapons were recovered, but it does not appear at this time they were used. So man, this, this, you know, just reading what I've read, I don't know, I wasn't there. Um, th th this is the first time I've really read about this. Man, this may have been a setup for, you know, a staff assault. You know, and I, it, it would make sense for them to go after these enhanced charges and, and, and you know, kind of far-fetched charges of torture and things like that. If, <clears throat> excuse me, they determine that this was a, you know, a strategic attack on staff, I understand. You know, I, I, I would see, you know, I don't agree with it, but I would see why that they would be like, oh, okay, you, you want to attack us? Well, we're going to try to get you life on this torture charge, okay? If it was just a regular riot where, you know, say a, 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 a gentleman from down south may have been fighting a, a black man or something, and they tried to put these charges on during a skirmish, I think that would be weird. But from what I'm gathering, man, it seems like it was a targeted assault on staff. And, you know, and of course, when they feel that they're directly targeted, they're going to bring everything they got, and they got a lot more than you have, you know? Yeah, that makes so sense. That and, that's, that, sense. and I'm surprised that there's not more casualties, too. If they feel like this was a thing on staff, they'd be shooting you in the head. You know, what makes me what, – the question I want to uh, raise about that is, is if it's an attack on staff, you know, um, was it a group thing? Was it, Were there all the correctional officers in cahoots as far as – there had to been some type of mistreatment, some type of abuse was going on, some type of oppression that was being oh, yeah, inflicted. Yeah. There are no some correction, you know what I'm saying? By correctional officers on, on these inmates. Mm -hmm. Because I don't see anybody staging an attack. How do you know the it's going to be the particular targets you want? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So this goes to correctional officers out there, man, that that what we got to understand is, you know, the Crips are, have been very well known for doing that, man. I think they, they rushed center complex before. I think it was in Calipatra years ago, man. Got off of them. And then they ended up be, being sent to Corcoran Shoe. And when they got when they were they got the business from the correction officers there in corporate, man. But for the correction officers out there that are just doing their job, you got to realize, man, if you have a partner or or a, a, a co-worker that's abusing his authority towards inmates, you know I mean, there's only a certain limit that inmates can take to where actions, reprisal actions may be taken. And if you're wearing the same uniform and same insignia as your co-worker that's inflicting all these punish, un, unjust punishments and, you know what I mean, mistreating people, they're going to look at you no different. Because if you're staging a fight to get correctional officers over there to rush, that means that they must have had a, a certain type of group there that was mistreating inmates for them to have the need and desire to take that kind of action. Yeah. They got to remember, you're dealing with individuals that are doing life sentences. They got nothing to lose. You know what I'm saying? So if you put, if you, if you back a dog into a corner, and mistreat it, eventually it's going to bark back and it's going to snap back. Hey, especially on these level fours, bro. Like, I, I can't really speak for the gentleman from down the way, but as far as the as far as far the Northern Collective goes, for it to get to the point where you have to do something to a canine, it's going to be serious. It's a serious thing because, no, you don't really want no problems with them because they're going to, the end result is you're going to lose. You know, you might get gratification, you know, during the initial assault, during, you know, you might you might take one of them dudes out and be happy. But the ramifications long term are going to affect your group hourly. You know what I mean? OK. Level fours for them to be that pissed off where they, where they felt like they had to attack staff. It had to be. A lot of minor things that just they got fed up with it or one major show of disrespect because. When you would uh, uh, assault staff, you know the mini 14s coming out, and they're not looking to shoot you in the foot. They're not looking to shoot you in the leg. 
they're going to kill you, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it, it has to be enough where they feel like we really have to make an example for this, for this perceived abuse to, to, to make our statement, man. I'll tell you, when I was in C-10, bro, in 97 and 98, I was the block commander for C-10. When them cops would come search my cell, they'd wait till I went to the yard. You know what I mean? Bef they'd open my door, and before they even went in my cell, they would come to the back door at the yard, talk to me through the thing. Fisher, we have to search your cell. Is there anywhere, you know, you would like us to place your personal pictures and stuff that you have on the wall while we do our search? We apologize. We have to take them down. You know what I mean? To look behind them on the wall. You know what I'm saying? Very, very respectful because they don't want no problems either usually, bro, unless something's wrong with them, unless they have that bully type mentality where they think that you're just a piece of shit and you have to, you know, bow down to what they say. They've always kept it 100 with me in Pelican Bay, but I was in the shoe and they knew I held a significant amount of weight. You know what I mean? I have been places though where Bro, they talk shit. They disrespect your stuff. You know, you might end up, man, coming back to your cell after a search and your damn toothbrush is in the toilet. It's like, bro, I've told a couple. I've had to tell a couple throughout my career. Hey, why don't you slide in the cell with that with that shit you're talking about? You know what I mean? You're, you're doing a lot of big talking behind the door. Why don't you wait till your, your people are gone off the tier and come on in? Handle it like a man. You obviously have something personal against me. You know, you're going to spill my coffee all over the floor while I'm at yard. You know, come in here, take my coffee off the table, throw it on the floor in front of my face with no handcuffs. People, and I I'm, I, and I got a date in a couple months, but you're not going to keep playing with me like that. Or you can, but you're going to do it in a cowardly fashion when there's nothing I can do about it. You don't want to come in the room. But you keep doing this to these level four inmates that don't have a date, bro. They're not going to tolerate it. You know, you'll think, oh, these guys ain't nothing. Look how I throw their shit, trying to show out, making yourself feel better. They're, there's going to come to a point where people are going to call your bluff. And then you want to go, oh, they tortured me. Well, I mean, you've been antagonizing these group of gangsters for God knows how long. Or you did one unforgivable thing. You have to keep it professional. You want to come to work and go home every day. If you do your job, you, you treat others like you'd want to be treated, you're not going to be a target. That's never going to happen. Because nobody really wants to go after the cops unless something's wrong with you or you feel like you have no other choice. Because you know in the end, the consequences for you are going to be greater than the gratification you get for gassing him, slicing him, or putting hands on him. You're going to pay ultimately. Those are, solid, those are solid points right there, man. Um, you know, I've had those I've had those altercations with staff, you know what I mean, in my past, you know what I mean? At the, at the end of the day, man, it, it's that's where they got to realize it's a job. You can't take it personal. You go there, you do your 9 to 5, whatever it is, or their 10-hour shift, man, and then go home. And go, go home in one piece. You know what I mean? But you got to remember, you're dealing with people sometimes that maybe have nothing to lose. They're already in a bad situation. Their freedoms took. They're told when they can come out. You, they're feeding. Everything is basically programmed for them to have to go through a certain schedule. They have no freedom. And so whatever dignity and respect that you have, you can't put them in a situation to where you're demoralizing them, their character. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? And that's not to, not to put any cast any negative light. I like to believe a, a lot of times, not, how do you say it? I think there's a small percentage of people who are corrupt and abusive. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to that life. But you got to look, there's going to be repercussions for anyone else, your coworkers, never, just by your actions, man. You know, this, this whole situation, man, I'm just, I'm starting to play things back in my head. And I've been some places where I've seen some oppressive tactics. I've been, I've been oppressed, man. I've been tortured myself by fucking correctional officers, man. Mentally, physically, and all that, man. Been beat, man. Been, been giving them elevator rides, man. Um, had my stuff thrown in the toilet, man. My pictures ripped up, man. Thrown in the management cell for a week, butt naked, right? No running water. No mattress. I had to, I had to sleep on a cement slab. No sheets, no blankets. 
for a whole damn week. No book to even read. You know what I mean? And you're going to tell me that I'm supposed to be all right with that once I get out back out to the mainline? Oh, man, I was even worse, man. I wasn't having it, man. Um, so, you know, this is just some kind of an enlightenment, enlightenment topic, man. Not only – I look at this twofold, man. I look at it, one, we're talking to the, to, the, to the inmates, the convicts, whatever you want to label them as, that are still behind the wall, and the type of gains that the system is playing. You know what I mean? You want to do this? This is what's going to happen. The other part, man, is for the correctional officers, officers out there that are doing their jobs. Like I've said before, I'm not, I'm not anti-law enforcement. We need rules and rules of conduct for society, which are what you call laws. Everybody has to be accountable to be respectful, treat people safe, and so forth to where we can flourish and live in, in, in this country. Same thing when you're locked up. I am against law enforcement who abuse their authority, you know what I'm saying, who use corrupt tactics who break the law themselves, who will attack you personally, who will, make, who will make it personal and not make it business. I'm against those type of law enforcement officers, and I think they have to be held accountable. And so what ends up happening is a lot of times you have a small percentage that fall into this category. It casts light on the whole overall whole collective. Therefore, you have consequences just like this. No doubt, man. Hey, I'll tell you what, one time, man, 17 years old, I was maybe 17 in a week. They raided my house the day after I turned 17 because they knew I'd already been to the Texas Youth Commission. I go to adult jail. In Texas, you go to adult jail when you're 17. So I'm in the county jail, 32-man dorms. There's 31 black men and myself, right? So I'm already like, uh, they were cool. All the brothers were cool as shit. I, I knew most of them because, man, I, I, used to, I used to be out on the block hustling you know, on one side of the street with, 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 with herb, you know what I'm saying? They were on with boulders on the other side of the street. So I knew a lot of them. So I was good with them. There was this one cop, gold teeth all through his mouth, bro. Gangster. I don't know how the hell he was a cop. Used to harass me all the time. I'd be asleep. He'd come by, yank my blanket off me, throw it on the floor, doing count stuff. And, uh, man, I, I talked to the OG black folks. I'm like, man, you know, what, what am I supposed to do to this fool? And they're like, man, he's, you got to challenge him to a fade. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, this is a big man, dude. I'm 17. This is a grown man. Hands the size of my head. Man, I'm sleeping one day. Next time he's on duty, comes by about two in the morning, yanks my blanket off, throws it on the floor. I jump off my bunk. I'm like, hey, what's up? Caught him all kinds of bitches and, and, and punks and, you know, whatever. He's like, you want to see me in the visitation room? You know, Fisher? I'm like, as a matter of fact, I do, bro. You know what I mean? We go in the visitation room, we handle our business. He probably gets the better of me, I'm not gonna lie, but I did good, you know what I'm saying? I landed some shots on him. Hey, next day, same cop comes in. He's like, Fisher, you wanna come out and work in the hallway? Bam, got me a job. Dude turned out to be cool as fucks. I don't know why he was fucking with me. I guess he wanted to do a heart check, I don't know. Next day, he had me working, run Out there, man, they come by your cell or, or your dorm, your pod, whatever you wanna call it, block. It was called I block. They come by with a little rolling cart and it would have like packs of cigarettes on it, coffee, soups, candy bars, soda in the bottom. You know how the bottom, you know, it's like four inches deep. They'd have that full of ice with sodas and people could fill out a commissary slip right there in their cell. There's a little, a quick buy, you know what I mean? So you could buy a pack of smokes, bugler, whatever. He was hella cool after that, bro. And it was just weird, but I noticed he didn't play with, some of the other dudes the way he played with me you know what i mean it's, i don't know it, it was a whole different thing but would he do that in like cofield or darrington or, or one of them you know about that action prisons down there or is it just in the county jail with a 17 year old kid you don't know but you you can't tolerate that man because for one them people they should have a higher level of accountability because they're professionals in the trade they, they enforce the law. They're, they're, they're cops, bro. They're, they're peace officers. And when they bully you over the years and this and that, they're putting themselves, they're taking away whatever they seem to think in their mind, the prestige or, or you know, the I'm better than you, you know, holier than thou complex you get with that badge. And they're becoming just like a, an inmate almost. You know, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're behaving like an inmate now. Pelican Bay is the wrong place to try to play with people. Straight up. 
I mean, you you probably can't even get away with too much of that on level ones and twos, let alone go step into the house with the grown men. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Know. But I promise you, whatever happened, there was a reason. The Mexican mafia is not going to authorize an assault on the police frivolously. They're going to think about that. They're going to think about, is it worth the ramifications? Or is the you know perceived insult too high that we can't let it slide? And they chose that it was too high. It could have been, it could, could have been to set the tone, to set an example. Say one of their high, high, hierarchy leadership was disrespected. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Something as simple as that. You know what I mean? Because that power, man, power and control is, is a big play in prison, man. And if you disrespect one of these elders, man, there's going to be consequences, whether you're correctional staff or not. Yeah. It's just like on the streets when you got those Rambo type police that like to maybe rough you up a little bit, this and that. You know, maybe they beat a few of your homeboys down pretty good. Well, now you're committing a crime. You see them dudes chasing you. You got a banger on you. You're thinking about throwing it. But if they catch you, they're going to beat your ass. Now, maybe you might pop at them dudes, man. You know, there's no reason at any time to abuse your authority. And that goes double more for the police because they're supposed to be held to a higher standard. I don't know. Just my opinion. There needs to be accountability, though. You know, um, that green wall shit. That should never happen. You know, they, they should be able to self-govern themselves, you know, where, hey, I don't want these inmates to throw, to gas me, to throw poop on me. You need to chill out, man, when you're searching these cells, bro. That's somebody's mother that you just threw their picture on the floor that might have died six months ago. You, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, bro, you don't know Good what point. you're dealing with on every different day. So, hey, conduct yourself like a professional because... High level gang members will also conduct themselves like professionals and they ain't gonna fuck with you if you don't fuck with them. That that goes back to this statement that we you know what I mean I've heard over and over again. You don't live here, you work here. We have to live here. You don't come see me going in your house, shitting on your house. Yeah, I've been prison is you're there for punishment. You're not there to be punished. It yeah. says that in the title 15 over you're and over again. That's abused. sure not, not there to be abused. You're there because you broke the law. Your punishment is to go there. It's not to be mistreated or tormented. You know what I mean? See, and, and, and for me saying this, bro, I've always, my thing is accountability. I've talked about it a lot of times. I got myself put in prison. Them CEOs didn't. I, I don't make their job no harder. I do my thing. You know, I might wiggle and try to break the rules and whatever, this and that. But I'm, I'm never disrespectful. <laughs> I can talk. I'm never <laughs> disrespectful until I feel disrespected. I mean, you see me the same way in, in, in just in the comments on this channel. I'm cool as hell to everybody. Hey, how you doing? Hope you have a great day. I send mine, appreciate you, sir. whoop de whoop whoop I'm the same way in prison, bro. But when you want to play with me, now your mama becomes a target. There's no more respect because I don't play with you. You lose all that. And you do not want to do that in a level four yard. You better take that stuff to fire camp. You, I mean, real talk, because these level four yards, they got gangsters in there. You know, you might hide behind your homies and your little badge, but one of them dudes will slide up and cut you and they will change your face. Leave them alone, be professional, come to work, do your eight hours. You don't need to be a douche, straight up. Well, anyway. <laughs> You know, am, am, am I wrong, though? I mean... No, I was thinking, you know, I was thinking in my head when you were talking, what about those correctional officers in there that know an inmate's weak, know an inmate's soft, and they, they target them? I've seen that happen before. I've seen them target dudes with mental health issues, and you know what I'm saying a lot of these, uh, some of these correctional officers that are corrupt, let me, let me rephrase that, man, for any correctional officer that's listening. I know a lot of you guys are not corrupt out there. I know the majority want to just do their job. Yeah, I don't but have nothing against the cops at all, bro. They do their job. There is that small per there is that small percentage that do like to abuse their authority. I've seen them abuse people with mental health issues. I've seen them abuse people who are soft, that are weak. I mean, people that we would never even try to take advantage of or oppress. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's the things that you've got to worry about. It's, it's, it's almost like, like, especially up there in Pelican Bay and High Desert, man. You know what I mean? I don't mean to br bring up any, 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 uh, racial overtones or anything, but 
they've been they've been racial in those areas for years, man. A lot of those cops over there are racist cops, and they've always favored the white boys. That's yeah. a fact. And if you're if you're a, mi a minority descent. They don't care that the Woods and AB get along with the Sureños. You're Mexican. You're brown. They're a whole different type of racist. They're real racist. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. They're really pushing that line. They're some corn-fed rednecks with a, with a job and a gun. You know what I'm saying? So they take it to a whole different level. So if you always notice in those type of areas like Pelican Bay, High Desert, it's always kind of the minorities who suffer those consequences. It's never the white faction groups. Yeah, I don't I don't even like to pull the race card because like in today's society I don't either. Everything is about race, bro. Oh, he did this, he's a racist, they did that, that's racist, they're appropriating a culture, this or that. I disagree with most of it. You know what I mean? I, to me, race is irrelevant, bro. You're either a good person or you're not. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you're you're dead right about Susan. I remember like, man, I've told this story. I was walking with the Crips when the homeboys were all on lockdown. The Crips said they had my back in case the the gentleman from down the way wanted to run up on me. They said they had my back, and I believe they did because they had me packed in the middle of their circle walking the track. Well, man, I looked up, and there were some cops by the damn uh, – there, there's this little shack, man, where you used to go get, like, dimes for the weight pile, you know, the little 10 weights and stuff. You'd have to give them your ID to get the little weights. And they were just looking at me, smiling at me like, oh, look at the white boy with, with the brothers. You know, just I, I knew what they were thinking. You know what I mean? It's like, what are you looking at, bro? You, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to do what I do. I don't care what you like and don't like. I'm going to talk to who I talk to. If you're cool with me, I'm cool with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, these dudes got my back. Who's got your back? You, you won't see these brothers walking you around the track if the Serenios want to get you. I'll yeah, most definitely. That, you know, but yeah, Susanville was a different animal, you know, but you know, I try, what about, I try to avoid what about, what about, you know, what about Pelican Bay for you, Matt? Because I know San Quentin for the most part was cool. The correction officers were cool, except for the goon squad. The goon squad was all over us, man. Um, DVI, was, DVI was, man, DVI for being in Northern California, man, you had a lot of, they, they hated the homeboys over there. I think San Quentin was the only prison where we really had it good. But at least in DVI, you had a little mixture of, of, of white correction officers and a few uh, uh, Rasa. High Desert, though, in, in, uh, in uh, Pelican Bay, I've heard a lot of bad things about those places, man. Being on, those are areas that are very, very, what do you call, uh, uh, remote areas. There's nothing out there. You know what I'm saying? So they rely upon these jobs, and they're hiring in the local communities. And a lot of those communities up there, man, let's just keep it real. They don't like minorities. I only had one incident in Tracy, man. It was it was with a, a, a black gentleman. He was a sergeant, actually. I don't even know why he'd be on the floor so much, but uh, he was real, real cool with the Crips. You know, all the Crips out of Stockton, the brothers. And one day, you know, on yard, I, I fucked up my wrist, right? And I, and, I, and I said, hey, I think his name was Williams. I, I'm not 100%, but I'm like, hey, I need to see the MTA. He's like, fill out a sick call slip. I'm like, no, I think I broke my wrist playing basketball. You know what I'm saying? And he kind of just laughed and kept pushing. I didn't see him for like two hours. So I get to kicking on the door. You know what I mean? I try to be diplomatic, try to be cool, try to be like, hey, you know, I think this is this is more than a sick call. I think something's broke. I'm kicking on the door. He, he, might, he must have he must have came by and told me some crazy shit. And that, that was one of those, hey, do you want to come in here and say it? I'll fight you with a broke wrist. You know what I'm saying? And my celly was yeah. about that action too. He's like, just let me deal with it. I got 17 years. Like shit. But it's like, there's no reason, bro. I'm not one of them J-Cat type dudes. Like if you talk to me, you'll be like, oh, this is a normal motherfucker with a sound mind. You know what I mean? He says he needs medical attention. Maybe I should do that. There's no reason not to because I never, I never disrespect, bro. Never. You know what I mean? Ever, ever, ever. I never will I disrespect staff unless you disrespect me. It's always, hey, how you doing today? Appreciate that when you hand me my mail. You know what I mean? My dinner plate. Thank you. Professional. You know what I'm saying? If I Man, say I need medical see? attention, it's because I need medical attention. I don't did, need attention. You, ever, you know? Bro, bro, did you ever see that Pelican Bay video? Not the main major riot, right? But there was another riot where a female officer was running, man. And one of the fucking dudes just jumped up and just straight knocked her out. Wow. Did you see that one? 
That was devastating. That was a devastating bench. Her eyes were like both black in the Oh my God, yeah. man. That was the Crips, you know? bro. Then Crips don't play, man. I'm, I, I, you know what, man? When if I hear the assault on staff, I, I'll automatically assume Crips. <laughs> they, they're not messing yeah. around. You know what I'm saying? They, they ain't messing around. They ain't putting up with it, man, at all. You know what I mean? Real talk. All right, man. I guess we touched on everything, man. This is just – this turned into a, a, a discussion, a dialogue about, you know, inmate and, you know, police interactions and the do's and the don'ts, man. But the lesson for today, man, is in these riots, you go to prison – Man, they, they try to charge these dudes with torture, bro. And I, I'm pretty sure that carries, if not life, a hefty sentence. And mayhem, bro, that carries a lot. So think about these things, man. I understand sometimes you can't let stuff slide or you'll be in trouble for being soft or whatever. But you won't have to worry about that if you don't get involved heavily in that lifestyle. You won't be facing mayhem for having to stand up for what you feel are your basic rights and being treated correctly because you'll be at home being treated how you want to be treated. There's today's lesson, ladies and gentlemen. Myself, this is Rojo, my boy Flacco. Maybe I'll come live later. Maybe I won't. You never know. Stay tuned.